Martha was a new believer. She had already understood how tithes and offerings were important for God's cause on the earth and how we should not be controlled by emotions or feelings when we give. She also knows that her tithes should be based on a percentage specified by God, 10%. But she was wondering how much should I give as offerings? Luckily, she had Jackie to explain everything she needed to know. Jackie had not only become her friend, but she had also happened to be Martha's Bible study teacher. Here, Martha, this is actually something very simple to understand. Paul suggests that we should purpose in our hearts something to give. Some people vow a fixed amount to be given regularly. But there is a problem with this suggestion. For example, I have a friend who vowed to give $10 as offering every time he received his paycheck. Not too long after that, he lost his job. Now how would he give something he didn't have? On the other hand, let's say you vowed to give $10 as offering, but you end up getting a new job with a very good salary. Do you think that $10 would be proportional to your blessing? So how should I give my offering, you may ask? Well, the Bible suggests that we should give offerings according to the blessing, or according to the prosperity. It is much easier when we give in proportion. So, in this fair percentage-based system of offerings, those who earn more, give more. Those who earn less, give less. And those who earn nothing, give nothing, and are considered truly faithful. Simple, right? It was by the Lord Jesus Christ Himself who gave His life for the world that this plan for systematic giving was devised. The cause would no longer be dependent on certain gifts of impulses and vary according to the changing feelings of men.
Why am I the only one in my class who doesn't own a cell phone? Why don't you purchase one? You know that I am just a student and that I don't have money. Then why don't you canvas? You'll be doing God's work and earning money. Luana was 15 years old when she considered her father's advice to canvas. At the end of her campaign, she was finally able to purchase her first cell phone after tithing and giving promise, a percentage-based regular and systematic offering from all her income. The following year, she canvassed again, earning enough to pay for her expenses, returning God's part, and still saving some money. One day, her father was thinking about how to give her the best financial education. So he said, Hey Luana, why don't you open a savings account to earn some interest from the money you have? But I no longer have that money. What? What do you mean? How did you spend all that money? Well, last Sabbath, the pastor told us that they launched a plan to renovate the church and asked those whose hearts were touched by God to give a free will offering, an offering of sacrifice, in addition to their tithe and promise. After praying, I decided that if he suggested that I open a savings account, this would be the sign that I should invest all the money into the church's renovation. So from now on, I no longer have that money. The Word of God invites us to regularly return tithes and give promise. But in addition to that, we may occasionally receive a call from the Holy Spirit to give also free will offerings. Ellen G. White says that, that which you bestow in the cause of God is not lost. Instead, these resources are gaining continually in value and will be registered to your account in the kingdom of heaven. Then she adds that you are to be recipients of the eternal wealth and all that you lay up above is secure from disaster and loss and is increasing to an eternal and enduring substance.